all important topic. That is the most important. If all the things that we shall do as believers, not as unbelievers, as believers, as believers, this is where our reward is. This this what comes on top of the list of the of the reward in heaven. This comes on top. First is how many souls did you bring? Number two, the next prize will be, and that is the, that is the, that is actually the marking scheme in heaven. The marking scheme in heaven is like this: soul winning first. That's what they will use to judge for the believer. It's not about going to hell. No, for the believer. The second is whether you stayed with the syllabus of the word in your teaching as a minister of the gospel. Whether you stayed with it, and I'll deal with that before I teach today, whether you stayed with the syllabus. Then number three, anything you did to contribute to the furtherance of the gospel, anything you did, money, help, anything you did to further or to push the gospel. These are the only three areas, main areas that a person will order. Then coming at the back of it, all that will be the motive with which you did the trade. See that? That's what Paul meant by that uh, our works will be tested by fire. The word fire is a metaphor. He's not talking about fire of, you know, destruction. You know, the, the, the fire there is a metaphor, you know, because when you, when you take metal or gold through fire, what the fire does that, everything that hasn't got the capacity to withstand the fire will fall off. So he's talking about testing scheme, marking scheme. It's not destructive fire. It's not destructive, no. It's just a metaphor. It's just a metaphor, a figure of speech that Paul used. So the testing of the, the word, the key word is test, 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 you see, test. What do we use a test for? When we sit our exams, they ask us questions, but what, are the questions just random? No, the questions are not random. The questions are based on a syllabus, specific marking scheme. So when he said, we'll be tested by us of, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a comparison, tested us of, like the way fire is used to you know, um, test gold or to test some kind of metals to make sure that they stand so they can be used in service. Can you understand that? So it's, it's not this, this our test is not fire to destroy. No, it just means marking scheme. There's a marking scheme. There's a marking scheme, okay? So these are the areas and all these three areas, salvation, preaching or teaching of the word to the believers in the line or in the framework of the syllabus, okay? Anything that you did, to further these two areas. But the overall arcing aspect is that the motive. See, did you do it? Did you do it because you wanted to show off so that you'll be seen or you rival or be competitive or to show that, you know, the motive. Now, the motive doesn't mean that you are, you are a bad person. The motive means that it will qualify you because God is love and he wants everything to be done with the pure motive of the unconditional love. Okay. Now, before we go into this evangelism, salvation, discipleship for today, winning the loss at all costs with urgency and love, there's an area that, you know, I've, yesterday I was deliberating on it, which, is a, which bothers me a little bit. And I want to clear that area up. And this is lesson nine here. I want to clear that area up slightly briefly before we go on. There is this school of thought that is roaming around, you know, that, you know, um, there is no one there is no one um, preacher or minister that has got all of the gospel or that has got the correct gospel. You know, that is very laughable. There's that kind of thing, you know. In other, in other words, how can you say that what you are preaching is the truth? The Bible can be interpreted anyhow. That is not true. That is not true. Now, that will be true if the Bible, okay, if, if the Bible in all the things that is written there um, is referring to different things, please follow me carefully on this. Follow me carefully on this one. Very, very important that you follow me carefully on this one. That will be true if the Bible hasn't got a uniform theme. So in that regard, we can say therefore that I can go into any book of the Bible and I'll pick the story of Samson. I'll make it my own. I'll pick the story of Gideon and let us see what you want to see. I'll pick the story as if we are the authors of the Bible. So that in itself is actually wrong. So do we have 
anything that points us to that direction? Absolutely, yes. Jesus himself. Jesus himself said it. It's clear. That is why you, if you see me, I always come back to that. I'm not, I'm, just, I'm not just repeating it just for repeating sake, but there's a reason why. Because I want our minds to be clear in that area. There are two questions that people keep on asking, you know. Oh, you know, there, there, there's this argument also that comes on the back of that. I'll come to that. They say, um, the, the Bible says that um, there are so many things that Jesus did that were not recorded. So we cannot go by only the Bible. You know, to go by only the Bible in Latin is called sola, sola scriptura. See that? Then they say, oh, there's also the tradition of the church fathers. So we cannot only go by the Bible. That is not accurate either. So they quote some Bible verses in where Jesus said that, I have many things to tell you, but you could not bear them. So they are saying that there were some things that Jesus Christ was going to say, you know, but he did not say them. And so those things that he did not say are the things outside the Bible. We call it extra biblical material. That is not true. When Jesus said that statement in John 16 about there are many things I want to tell you, but you cannot bear them. He was not referring to extra Bible material. He was not saying that there are some things that will not be in the Bible, but I cannot tell you. No, what he meant was that at the moment you are not born again. All you guys say, who well, are my disciples. So even if I told you about Adamic sin nature and I told you why I was going to die, it would not make sense. Why? Because First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says that the natural man, any man who doesn't have, has not received salvation, cannot understand the things of the spirit, for the things of the spirit are spiritually appraised or understood. See that? So he was not, he was not referring to the fact that there are uh, 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 you know, some things that you know he's going to say which are not in the Bible, so we cannot take only the Bible. That is not what it means. That Bible verse has been twisted. Then the second Bible verse they use is that in John, we say that there were many other things that Jesus did. Welcome, Mr. Hetty. There were many other things that Jesus did that were not recorded. That if the sum of them were recorded, the, the, the volumes of the books cannot hold them. So these proponents of this theory are saying that you know, um, you cannot only go by the Bible because there were other things that were recorded, were written, but they were not recorded. So the Bible, staying only with the Bible cannot be complete. That is also fallacious. It's erroneous completely. That statement, there were many other things that were written, okay? Jesus did that, were not recorded. It's not saying, therefore, that those things followed a different trend. That is where the error is. What they are trying to insinuate by saying that is that, he says some other things that are not in the Bible, which actually did, which actually vouches or endorses certain other practices is what they are trying to arrive at. So I can go and take anointing oil and let people drink because it is recorded that there were many other things that Jesus did which are not recorded, including making people drink anointing oil. No, that is not what that Bible verse means. Let me be very clear in that area. That is not what that Bible verse. He's not talking about irresponsible you know, conflagrant, you know, lopsided, you know, an ending realm of anything goes. That is not accurate. It's never true. That statement that he made there, we can get an answer. Let's look at what Jesus said in Luke 24. He said, all these things that have been written concerning who? Concerning who? Me. Me. So how can that other one be different? But how did the church fathers come to the agreement of Genesis to Revelation only? How? That is the question that we should be asked. What made them choose? Because there are other books like the book of the Maccabees 1 and 2. There's, there's the book of Seth, the book of Enoch. There's the, there's the sixth and seventh book of Moses. There are all these other books which were also part of the Apocrypha. So why were those books not, why were those books not added? The answer is very simple. The answer is very simple. The answer is that Jesus said that in Luke 24, that all these things in the writings of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms were concerning me. That means any book written around the era of the collation of what we call the canon of the scriptures, that did not follow this pattern. What was the pattern that Jesus said refers me? That I must, I must suffer and enter my glory. The suffering has to do with this. What him becoming made sin, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and the sitting and the indwelling of the believer. If any book 
did not capture this directly or indirectly, the church fathers thought it worthwhile to sideline it and not add it. So that statement, there were many other things that Jesus did that were not recorded, cannot mean and does not imply that there were many other things of disorder, of no, of no boundary. <laughs> See, that, that's the way some people are thinking, of no boundary. See that? Of no boundary, no framework. That is admissible. That is erroneous to the core. Then even in that same place in John that he said that, but these ones have been written that you may believe. In other words, the sum total of these ones that are written, it is more than enough for you to believe. You have not even read even one big portion of the 66 books and you want some more. And so then they end up saying that, yeah, but you know, there are some other things that the Bible said that Jesus did, you know. So now it means that we don't have any framework. And for us, especially Africans, one word that has been so wrongly applied is the, this word spirit. When we hear the word spirit, we mean that there are no rules, there are no boundaries, there are no frameworks. Once it is the spirit of God, anything can happen. That one is not true. No, 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 no. So spirit, people can drink anointing oil. Spirit, I can bring palm oil to rub on people's head because the spirit told me to do it. Spirit. I can go and bring wood and cutlass and begin to use to hit people. Spirit, because we can jump onto a mountain. Spirit, because we can let go and go to the riverside and go and have a bath with other people. What, what is that? What is that? Spirit. What is that? The spirit told me. The spirit told me. Listen, anything that is not done for between Genesis and Malachi is never acceptable. I don't care what they're practicing. The apostles stayed with the corridor. And the reason why it was written because it can be referenced. That is the number one reason. That means if it is not written, it cannot be referenced. Now, if some of you have, have been in academia and you have been to higher education and you studied a bit from, even, even at the system level, when you write an essay, they say, reference it. Have you ever written an essay? Let me, let's come to academia whereby you did not reference the lecturer, the teacher will not give you any marks. There will no marks will be given to you. You can write six pages, no reference. You will see the notes of your teacher. You've, read, you've written a lengthy essay, I applaud you for that. However, there were no, you did not teach you, deal with any critical issues by the fact that you failed to reference your statement. They will tell you straight away. Straight away they will tell you. Even with mundane things, they need you to reference your essay. Then when it comes to Christianity, anything goes. The spirit told me to eat oats. The spirit told me to chew granite. The spirit told me to eat grass. Oh, because the Bible says that, you know, there are so many things that Jesus did that are not written in the Bible. So anything goes. No, 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 no. Child of God, let me be honest with you. There's nothing like that. Any practice... Anything that cannot be found in Genesis to Revelation is not of the Spirit of God. And you know what? I do not even, I do not even empathize in that area. That, and I need to be honest, as a teacher of the word and your pastor, I need to be honest with you. I need to be brutal in that area. All other things is man's proposition. It's, it's somebody's own mind. You have to, you see, when you're a believer here, yeah, sometimes you need to be a bit tough in your doctrine. Stay where you are. Be tough. Be tough there. Don't be afraid of the replication. Stand where you are. The Bible says that the righteous shall be as bold as a lion regarding doctrine. Be bold. Don't be afraid. Let, if it's the norm that everybody is doing, <laughs> by the way, it's not in Genesis to Revelation, you cannot ask. You know. Now, let me, for example, let me knock off some facts. There are some things that scientists have been doing, which it does not corroborate in the word of God. Everything started in Genesis. Everything started in Genesis. So, that assertion is not correct. So when anybody gives you anything, whether it's sikubums and incubums, whatever it is, ask them, show me where it is in the Bible. Now, if you cannot accept that, then you have a serious journey to make in the word of God. Where is it? Where is it? That means that the Bible, Genesis Revelation, is the closed canon. It's the closed syllabus. That's why he said in the book of First. Timothy said that no part of the prophecy of the Bible comes about by one's own private interpretation. 
But men wrote, watch it, men wrote the Bible as they were born along by the Holy Spirit. So that means that the author, the one that endorses what is required to be written is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has given us the corridor. So the single team, the singular team is one, salvation by faith in Christ, throughout, directly or indirectly. There is no book in the Bible that does not point to that event in some way, no book in the Bible. So this is where I'm coming up to now. Therefore, based on this, if the subject matter is not salvation, then it is not the gospel. See that, that is where we have to live. If we say that, if we say that, oh, but the Bible can be about so many things, then that means that we don't know the, the theme of the Bible. That is why Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, that from your childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto or concerning or regarding salvation by faith in Christ Jesus. The Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament, its main focus is salvation. So I submit to you that the entire Bible's main subject is salvation. Not salvation when the person says that I want to receive Jesus. That is the process. But we are saying that the life we have in Christ, everything about the Bible is about salvation. When you know that the main event that brought this whole thing out was Adam's sin. If Adam had not sinned, there would be no need for the Bible. Let me say it again. Maybe you didn't hear me. If Adam did not sin, there would have been no need for references of the Bible. So the reason why the Bible, now hear me out before I go on, the Bible is superior to any dream, any vision, any prophecy, any kind of, you know, kind of spectacular, any of that. The first reference point you must look for is where is it in the Bible? And even if it's in the Bible, how many times was it recorded? Two or three at the minimum. So until we agree that the main subject area of the Bible, it concerns the only book in the world that deals with the subject called salvation. Other books can deal with theology. Other books can deal with philosophy. Other books can deal with aquatic biology. They can do with uh, geodetic engineering. But this one only, this one only, is the only of its kind that deals with only a subject matter called salvation. If you don't settle that in your mind as a believer, you'll be tossed to and fro. So that statement that people say, oh, we cannot take only the things that are in the Bible. You know, you know, sometimes, you know, there's no, that is never true. Until you train yourself like that, you have not, you set yourself up for deception and you cannot mature in the word. Stay with the syllabus, the framework of the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. That is all. If it is not in there, forget it. It is either a figment of your imagination, traditions of men, or it is just a fable. Forget it. So any dream, any vision, anything, find out where is it. See, it is some of them a creation of men. Let me bless your Bible. This you might agree with me, you might not agree with me. You know, because it's, there's no there's no evidence. The, it is written because that means that the document of the Bible in itself is the evidence. That is why God made it to be written. It was spoken and it was written. So anything that is spoken, whether a dream or a vision, and it is not recorded, it is not evidence. There's no evidence to it. There is no empirical evidence to it. That is why in law, uh, in law, somebody can murder, but based on empirical evidence, they can acquit him. Because the lawyer doesn't go by emotion, sentiment. Uh, have you seen that when they, when they charge somebody in the court, 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 uh, law, uh, court of law, uh, and they say guilty, he's going to 10 years in prison. The parents and the family can roll on the floor. They can cry. They can even go, all of them can stand in front of the judge and let tears of fire fall from their cheeks. The, the judge will not change his mind because law is not based on emotional sentiment. It's based on evidence. Evidence. Law and precedent. Evidence. So you must also learn to go by evidence. And what is evidence? Something that is tangible and it is there. Like the word Genesis to Revelation, it is evidence. So for example, if you say that, oh, you know, you, do you know that there's, ma there's mommy water? Where? Where, where, where? Where is the evidence? Oh, a certain man said he traveled and he saw mommy water. It can be evidence. 
It cannot be, ev where is the evidence? The person is saying it based on their own experience. You were not there, I was not there. See that? Is it somewhere in the Bible? No. You see what I'm talking about? Oh, but Pastor Fred, you know, people say that they've seen mommy water. Show me where is the evidence. It, that is why we get into problem. You are now depending on personal experience. And that's what I'm trying to train you to see. Move away from personal experience. Let the word be the word. Is it in the word? Yes. How many times? Two or three. Aha. Uh -huh. Then we are talking about doctrine. Is it in the word? Yes. How many times? Once. Forget it. It's not a doctrine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So that statement that they see that we cannot go by only the Bible, sola scriptura, it in itself is antichrist. It's antichrist. It's complete antichrist. And that is some of the things that they are pushing in Bible schools. Oh, you know, yeah, we know the Bible is there, but you know, we must reference other theologians. Who are they? Who are they? Who are those theologians? Are they higher than Jesus? When Jesus himself said that all these things concerning me, whether they are Swedenborg or whoever, are they, are they higher than Jesus? See, that, that is why I had problems when I was in the Bible school. I will not accept that. Sorry. I will not accept that. I don't care who he is. I respect them, but they cannot be higher than Christ. Even God himself said in the book of Psalms, I have exalted my word above my name. His word is even higher than his name. That is his word is everything. The day that God's word will not function, the entire universe will self-destruct. So if you don't learn this boundary I'm talking about, this boundary, it's a boundary of Genesis to Revelation and be satisfied with it, very soon you will let people start talk you out of it. And I know Pastor Fred, you see, but you see sometimes somebody, talk, don't go by experiences. Every experience is different, but let the word of God be true. So that is why you have to let us why he said, you Timothy, you Timothy, among the melee of all these false teachers, stay central for from your childhood, 2 Timothy 3, verse 13, 14, 15, 16, for thou, from your childhood, thou has known, you are very conversant with the Holy Scriptures, that they concern salvation by faith in Christ Jesus. So to say that, oh, we don't have all the revelation, but that means that you are saying that there are other topics that the Bible deals with. Then we are going to get into error. You see that now? But if you know that salvation is the main topic, then that is the revelation. Salvation is the revelation. It was hidden from them in the Old Testament because we are not born again, but it was revealed in Christ. We have all the facts about salvation. It is just that, it does that, Sometimes the way it is put together, now we are trying to get the clear understanding, but all the facts are already there in the word from Genesis Revelation. We are just discovering. The discovery doesn't mean that it has not been revealed. It has been revealed, you just didn't know. Can you get that? I need I needed to do that because you know the spirit brought that area. That means that on the minds of some people, that thing is still lurking there. So we will not come to that agreement if you don't accept that Genesis to Revelation is the complete compendium of the word of God. There are no ifs or buts and no additions. Now, some people try, eh, you know, the Bible has got mistakes. It's not about mistakes, translation. There are no mistakes in the Bible. There are no contradictions in the Bible. It is just a translation problem. And that doesn't mean that the context has been changed. Glory to God. Do you understand? I needed to do that before we go on to, to today. Very important. When you go out in evangelism, this is what you're going to face. I have faced them so many times. I went to Brixton to some guy. They call themselves the Nubians. These guys have gone to study the, see, so you can study the Bible, but you can study it for the wrong reasons. And they started to come in out with all, my, I went to the certain guy. They went with all manner of things. This guy had been bombarded by this guy called Nubians. And they were saying some things and some, so I told them, I just kept because I let them talk. When they first talk, I say, you know what? Thank you for what you've said. But you know what? The good thing about that, the whole thing about the Bible is about salvation. Then they were quiet. It's about that God has brought salvation. So of what use is you telling me all these theories whilst you've got a, a million dollar money in the bank waiting for which is salvation. That what you told me, is it going to take me out of the sin of Adam? No, they were quiet. Then the guy said, oh, I get it. Oh, so I see. So that means that they have missed the purpose of what the Bible, for which the Bible was written. So please, when you go on evangelism, don't let them pull you into these tangents. Some will pull you into politics. Some will pull you into this. Some will, they can even use the Bible to even qualify them. So for example, they use the story of, of Israel coming out of Egypt to say 
that just as God took Israel out of Egypt, that's how, you know, God, and that's, how, that's, how, that's what brought about the black theology in America. And that's what all this, you know, Martin Luther, you know, the, the black guy started to use. That he started to preach using that. Now God is going to bring the black race out of the slavery of, 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 of slave trade or apartheid. That is not the purpose of the gospel. God died for every human being. We know Satan is behind it. So your, our job is to pray that these guys there receive Christ. Once they receive Christ, their eyes will open. And the ones who are behind all this apartheid and all that, they will stop. See? But you cannot use the Bible to back your stuff that, you know, is political. So just as, you know, God delivered. So God is going to deliver China. No, God has done all the, God has done all the delivery he has to do already in Christ. It has to be offered by the gospel. That is why the apostles never concerned themselves with anything politics. They went into cities. How did Paul get gained cities? He went into cities. He just preached the gospel. It was the preaching that delivered men. Paul didn't go into any political campaign. He was before Agrippa. He was before Festus. He was before Festus Portius. He was before all these guys. He never took sides politically. All he did was he presented the gospel. That is all. See that. So this great commission and this great mandate is for every believer. It's for every believer. That is, that is all we have. It is not about trying to, you know, take sides. Men who are in position, the reason why they are behaving like that is because they have Adamic nature. That's why they are committing genocides and, and killing people because Satan's nature is in them. Satan's nature is in them. It's working. It's working. So if that man can be born again, just like Apostle Paul. Do you know that Paul was called Saul? He was the one that was terrorizing Christians as a Jew. Look at what the Bible said. The Bible said that when Paul now became born again, at once he started to preach the gospel. And people were afraid of him because they said, this is the man who was persecuting the church. But look at the next verse. The next sentence said that, and great peace was now enjoyed by the whole community. Why? The terror chief had become born again. And that was the end of the terrorism that Paul was doing. Or as he was going on the route to Damascus. So that means if you understand that whatever political affiliation, whatever is going on, our job is to pray for them to receive Christ. When they receive Christ, I'm telling you, whatever they were doing behind the scenes politically, they will stop it. They will stop it. So that's why I said, go therefore and make disciples. The word disciples is matatis, students of all the nations. I said the word nations, ethnos, not only nation of Syria, uh, nation of Lebanon, no. Nation also means any kind of group you are in where you have a common bonding or common interest. So if I am a, if I am a if I'm a fashion designer, among my fashion designers' friends, that is nations, ethnos. We are a nation unto ourselves. If I am a physics teacher, among physics teachers, my friend physics teachers is my nation. If I am a footballer, among as a born again believer, among footballers, they are my nation. Okay. So that's what we talked about. All right, so we are talking about some practical approaches also to the word. And we came to number five. We said, if you can make your prospect understand that every man outside of Christ is spiritually dead, we can see that Jesus Christ offers the only solution to man's need of spiritual death. And we talked about John 10, 10. He said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And we said there are three or four Greek words translated from the Greek to the English single word life. And we said these words are as follows, bios, which just means natural life. And we get from that word biology. So when you see the word life in the Bible, you must look at the context and see whether, is it talking about natural human life or it's talking about another kind of life form, okay? Then we have got anastrophe. Anastrophe is the life that came out of the sin of Adam, okay? That, that is confused behavior like the unbelievers or all of us that we were, spiritual death. Then we have got suke, manner of life. That one is just a person's own manner of life or a group of people, their style of life, suke. Then we have got zoe. Zoe is the one that is translated as abundant life. It's the quality of life unparalleled. So when the Bible says that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That word new, new is the Greek word kainos, K-A-I-N-O-S, kainos. That means, it's referring to this. That means a life form, a life species that is unparalleled, that is matchless, 
that has never existed before. It has no past background of sin. It has no past genealogy of any curse. This one started off brand new and it has only got one genealogy. The Bible says, hey, little children, we are of God. You are, not, you are not into, you know, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. No, no, you are of God. You are born from above. This man has no background. He's a type. His type, his DNA makeup is totally unknown and seen. That's why Jesus said, the world does, does, because they don't know you, like they don't know me, they'll hate you. They cannot, they cannot figure you out. The, the, the born again man cannot be figured out. That means it, you, are, you stand distinct. And that's the word you use there, zoe, zoe, okay? So let's go to some Bible verses that we did yesterday that explains this life that came from Adam, the anastrophe. We talked about Isaiah 53, six, all, all of us from Adam, because of Adam's DNA, like sheep have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way, but the Lord has caused the wickedness of all of our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing to fall on him, Jesus, instead. Isaiah prophesied this 800 years before Christ came. Accurate. Romans 1, 18 to 32, we read it yesterday. The, the effect of Adam's sin came in, yes, as we said yesterday. Look at all, all of that. So now, when you, when you now, so when you approach your prospect, the first thing to do is to let them see the problem. That is where you start. The problem. The problem in Adam's sin. That is where you start. Okay. Then you let them see the solution. So the solution is like in here. After this, tell your prospect of the offer that is available. So John chapter 1, 12 to 13. But as many as did receive, I told you that the apostles never prayed anywhere in the Bible that somebody must be saved. No, they prayed that the people would receive salvation. Why? Salvation is a gift. See, because Jesus has done everything about salvation. He has finished it. He said, he had, having obtained eternal redemption once and for all, he has done it. In the eyes of God, God has dealt with sin. But in the eyes of the world, the sin still exists. So the vaccine, the vaccine against sin nature and sins is the life in Christ. So just like coronavirus, coronavirus, they found the vaccine. So it's up to the individual to go and receive the inoculation. See that the, va the, the vaccine is available, but the vaccine will not walk to your house. See that? So also in Christ, it's available by Christ coming to us. So they don't know. So we must go and tell them. That's why I said, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, that is believing, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God. That's why I said that nobody is a child of God by, by birth. Because look at the word, to become. That means you are not. To become. That is to those, so what's the key there? To those who believe is what the Holy Spirit looks for. Like yesterday I was explaining to Sister Jennifer, that is the marking scheme of salvation. When he can identify you believing, believing, and only God can know who has believed and who has not believed. <laughs> okay, right, that is that. He said, and when you believe, Lord, you are you were born not of blood, that is natural conception, nor of the will of the flesh, physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that is a natural father. That's why Jesus is the only person that is was different. His, his natural father, Joseph, was not the one that supplied the sperma, but you are born. Of God. That means you were manufactured. <laughs> Your born against spirit was manufactured by God. That's why he said in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10, he says that, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Kabadai, I love that. That word created, we are his workmanship is the Greek word poema. We are the master stroke of his poem. Hey, believer, you are not easy, you, the believer. Master stroke. You have to appreciate that. You are not some, you are not some known entity. It's not, it's not even based on whether you have some money in the bank account or no, 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 it's not even based on that. As important as it is, the born again man is a master stroke poema. You are born of God, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. Okay, so we've said that. 
So we said that the key thing is believing. You have to bring that prospect to the point of believing that Jesus is the substitute. By the fact that Adam brought the problem, but God in his love, regardless that it was our fault, took our place. So that's why I said, because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognize his authority and majesty as God, which is, see, which is the confession is a result. It might not always be verbal, but it's just, he's saying that the key thing is, which is what I'm referring to is, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart of a person, for with the heart a person believes, so that's the key word. You believe, is persuaded. So that is why I'll come to that place in a moment. That is why in your preaching, you have to bring the person to that place of believe you need to find out it, it, you don't necessarily always have to ask him whether they should confess Jesus, like, oh, now conf um, say this after me. Not necessarily. I'll explain that later why. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But what you must be able to bring the person to is that, do they believe that Jesus is their substitute? Why? Because many men will not believe. It doesn't sound logical to their mind. And she, 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 she will share an example that happened yesterday. She, see, they, they say they believe God, but they don't believe in Jesus. Ah, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Jesus is God. <laughs> so if you say you believe God, that's why I said what? For with the heart, a person believes in where? Who, who, who? He didn't say God. In Christ, a savior. So don't let them throw you off with this. Oh, me, I believe God. No. Which God are you talking about? Because God is Christ and Christ is God. There is no God outside Christ. So don't let them trick you with that very sly statement. Oh, I believe in God. Then we just, we, we, we think, oh, wow, praise God. Well, at least no, which God are you talking about? See that? And when you do that, what well, you are freed of the guilt of sin. What is that guilt of sin? Every human being since Adam has a knowing inside them that something is not right about their nature, the sin of the, the guilt of Adam. Then now when you believe, now you are free from that. See, there is also a no, since the day you got born again, it is just because of the fact that you're not being exposed to correct teaching. That's why you are always living in guilt and condemnation. Because Romans chapter eight says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No, no, there's no education of wrong, none whatsoever. So your spirit knows that you are free. But your mind probably has still not gotten around to it. That's why you are walking in guilt. And I'll deal with that little, little, little. Guilt, you know, you know, and not understanding your righteousness. So when you are not taught properly, you are walking in guilt. But your spirit, your spirit knows that you are free. By your mind. That's why you have to renew your mind in the facts of the word. So that is what you must present in the solution to the, the unbeliever. Look at John 5, 24. I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, the person who, whose ears are open to my words, who listens to my message, what message is he talking about? Is he talking about, you know, the Beatitudes and the parables? No, he was talking about the message of salvation that will be available. He is the message. He's talking about, he will believe in me what I am going to do to sin and believes and trusts and clings and relies on him who sent me. He was sent for a purpose. He's called Savior, Suta, has, has, possesses now eternal life. So that thing happened instantly the moment you believe. Not after. He said you possess it. And he does not. He does not. He does not. He does not. John 5, 24. He does not come into judgment. He does not. Since the day you were born again, you are not, you have, you are out, you have been exonerated from judgment. What is that judgment? That when you have, the person dies, your spirit will go and serve the sentence in here, which Jesus has served already for you. He does not come into judgment, that decision, that decision, Jesus has done it for you, and does not incur the sentence of judgment. Did you see that? Will not come under condemnation. Did you see that? But has already, from the day you believed in Jesus, passed over out of death, which death? Spiritual death, into life. Zoe. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Let the prospect also understand that it is a heart or a spirit affair. That's where the problem is. A man believes in his heart and confesses with his mouth or agrees. When he does this, God the Father gives him eternal life. Zoe, take note of the following. 
the word of salvation concerning the facts of what Jesus Christ has done as our substitute to Adam's signature is the evidence of salvation for the person that acts on it. You didn't hear me. Let me say it again. The fact that they have believed on the facts of the gospel, that is your evidence of salvation. Not because the person was shedding tears. Don't go by that. It's okay if they shed tears because maybe they are remembering some things that they did. <laughs> that is fine. Or they saw a ball of fire. I told you that in 1981, when I received salvation, there were three of us, three friends, that were preached to. Out of the three friends, one of them said that they, on the, the moment that they received Jesus and, you know, we received Jesus and we received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, he saw a ball of fire. I didn't see a ball of fire on campus in my secondary school. Does that mean that because he saw a ball of fire, he is more born again than I, I am? No. What is the, where, where, is the, where is the dividing line? The facts of the gospel. We all believe the facts of the gospel. But with him, just that something extra. I don't know why he saw a ball of fire, whether it was a figment of his imagination or whether it was a supernatural or chemical, I can't tell. That's why we don't have to go by those. Stay with the word. And if that person is not careful, he will go around preaching that as an, as an extra part of the gospel. He'll be preaching that, you know, when I got born again, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that my conversion is, is genuine because when I got born again, I saw a ball of fire. I am telling you, until you see a ball of fire on the day that you got born again, you have not received Jesus. You see now, you see where he's going with it now. And he can go around preaching that. Like some of people are using the same thing in Acts chapter 2. No, you know, until your prayer meetings are like the, the day of Pentecost. Ah, 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 ah. You must see tongues of fire. You must hear the sound of wind. Then that is when the no, 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 no. Why, 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 why? The fact that it is written does not mean that it you should practice it. Some of them, the most of them are just evidence, re reference. But for believers, the thing that everything in the Bible means that God said we should pray about it. Everything in the Bible means that God said we should we should we should practice it. No. So just them acting on the facts of the gospel is there enough evidence that is all they believe that is all that is why if you see throughout the bible believe 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 on the lord jesus christ and you receive that is all that is the that is the criteria did you believe that's all so you have to find out whether they believe and you will know so you can push some questions like so do you believe that jesus christ is your substitute for sin then when the person is a little bit you know, hesitant, they know that he has not believed. Uh, mm, anyway, somehow, he has not believed. So then you ask him, what, where is the struggle? Yeah, I know that, you know, he died for me. But what I cannot take is that he went to hell. Aha. Uh -huh. So then you have got a little bit more work to do. Or what I can't really accept is the fact that he resurrected from the dead. Aha. Uh -huh. Or how can somebody who died 2,000 years ago, how can his, his thing affect me? How? I was not there. Then you bring Adam's own. Then you read Romans 5, 12, 13, and 14. Just as through one man sin entered, Adam was, was the only person there, but he says that we all, it has affected our DNA. How do you explain that? Oh, okay, I see. So it's the same. So if you share the message of salvation, watch it, with its facts, basing on the resurrection, without closing the deal, now that's what I'm going to end today with, Closing the deal by getting the person to make an actual decision. When I say decision, bring the person to the point of truth. You need to find out how they believed. All your talking has not really yielded any result. Now, for some people, you need to do it two times, three times, four times. That's what I'm talking about. Some of them, might, it might take a year. Some of them, it might take six months. But at least you are dropping the hints. Very important. Very, very, very important that you understand that. So you have to determine whether the person believe. So closing the deal is the most important thing. Getting the person to make the actual decision is the thing that counts. When we say decision, you've got to find out whether he has believed. You see, in the case of Cornelius, the Holy Spirit saw that the people, Cornelius and his guys, when Peter was preaching, he could see that they believed. He could see. That is the, that's, that's the deep work of the Spirit. So you bring the facts. So the believer is rewarded for the deals closed, not the number of deals started. So the starting is fine, but you must persist. Sometimes you might need to speak to the person two times, three times, four times. Look at me. 
they started to preach to me since 1976. He was my senior, who was the president of the Christian group in, on campus. He started preaching me from year, from year, year seven, from 1976. I did not, <laughs> I was very stubborn. I did not yield until November 1981 when I got to six strong. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, hey, what kind of preaching have I now, Satanda? From the ones that in Ghana, we've got something they call early morning dawn broadcasting. We don't have it in this country. Like early in the morning, some guys will be walking up and down the streets and they'll be preaching the gospel. See, they do that. It's allowed. No problem. Or in buses. I've listened. I listened to all that. I didn't budge. <laughs> and this guy, his bed was next to my bed in the, in the, in the boarding house, the secretary, the interna. He's next to it. What did he preach me? Preach me, Jesus is love. Preach me, death, burial, resurrection. <laughs> Preach me, you know. I, I, and my mind was twisted. So if it took, if it took God, five years to get my attention. So uh, what about just the two months? <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. So he's closing the deal, and and I, I, I applaud the, the brother who is a pastor in Italy now. You know, who was my junior? Who was the one who persisted? He persisted. The, the day that I was going to, I was going to receive salvation. He started from the school gate day one. I didn't accept. He came early morning the next day. I was sleeping. He tapped me. I love his persistence. But in a very lovely manner, he didn't. He didn't force. In a very sweet, gentle manner, he preached the gospel. I didn't accept. He came again the same day in the afternoon. Took me out of the dormitory because there was there was too much distraction and took me onto the veranda of the dormitory. And he and this guy, whilst he was preaching, the other guy was speaking in tongues. I didn't know that was called speaking in tongues. But I'm telling you, for me, the unbeliever, it was scary. I heard him speaking some language and I could feel like heaven had come down. I could feel the anointing. That was the anointing, but I didn't know. And he was preaching. I like, that guy is so cool. He was so cool. I mean, I applaud him. He was so cool. Cool. He just dropped the points. 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 Then he went into when Jesus spent three days and three nights in hell. All of a sudden, it was there that my eyes were open. I understood it. Then he asked me, do you believe? I said, yes. So, <laughs> so results are the only thing that counts. Your argument, your logic, your talking do not or does not mean a thing unless you are able to bring a person to make a decision or to believe uh, the person to believe in Christ. Okay. So let me look at a quick example. And then we could look at Acts chapter 8 from verse 25. You know. I'll not read all of it. An example. Now, when the apostles had borne their testimony and preached the message of, of the Lord, they went back to Jerusalem, proclaiming the glad tidings, which is the gospel, to many villages of the Samaritans as they were going on their way. Then verse 26, but an angel of the Lord said to Philip, see, angels cannot preach. That's why the man must preach. Rise and go southward or at midday on the road that runs Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So the man just obeyed. He got up and went. And behold, an Ethiopian. See, that means Philip understood that this must be about evangelism. And behold, when he got there, look, here was this Ethiopian and, and you know, you know, you know, so they serve in the court of a queen. You know, they are circumcised because they, 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 they bait the queen. Okay. A eunuch of great authority and, and a Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasures. So this man is a finance minister and a Candace. So this is, a, this is a big shot had come to Jerusalem to worship. Why? Because under the Old Testament, they believed that the only place that the spirit of God was, was in, in the temple in Jerusalem. So wherever you are to worship, you have to go to Jerusalem. So this thing was borrowed. This is where the Muslims borrowed this thing of going to Mecca. They borrowed it from here. They think there's some magic formula about it. Okay. So now the spirit of God draws in a man. And he was now returning and sitting in his chariot. So a chariot is today's type of maybe a Lamborghini, a Mercedes Benz, because not everybody could own a chariot. He was reading the book of the prophet Isaiah, verse 29. Then the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go forward and join yourself to this chariot. So the Holy Spirit could see that this guy, look, Philip was in a meeting with people. He was in a crusade. And God decided that for the sake of this one man, he could see this man wanted to know the truth, but he didn't know the truth. So angels can't preach to men. So he had to find somebody who understood the training that Jesus had given them that salvation is the main message of the gospel. So he said, go to where this man's chariot and look at verse 30. 
And what did Philip do? Accordingly, Philip ran. He heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. Remember that Philip was part of the people that were, 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 they were part of the 11. So they had received the training about knowing that the Old Testament refers to Christ and the sufferings. He said, he heard him reading Isaiah and asked, do you really understand what you are reading? Do you know what this is about? See that? And then verse 31, and he said, how is it possible for me to do so? Unless someone explains it to me and guides me how? In the right way. That's what I said in the beginning. The Bible has got its own right way of explanation. The Bible is not interpreted anyhow. Anybody can just interpret it anyhow. It is, no, 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 no. That's why he used the word in the right way. How they were trained by Jesus in Luke 24. Specific. And he earnestly requested Philip to come up and sit beside him. And then he was reading what? Now this is the passage of scripture which he was reading. So that's Isaiah 53 he was reading. Like a sheep he was left to the slaughter. He went through a whole of Isaiah 53. You know, then he asked him, the, 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 the Enoch asked Philip, I beg you, tell me about whom the, the prophet said this, this about himself or about someone else. Look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this portion of scripture, he announced to him what the glad tidings, the gospel of Jesus and about him. Did you see that? Because Philip understood that the summation of the entire Bible is about salvation. Philip didn't use that side to mean something else. He stayed in the syllabus. And then look at the verse 37. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, she believe, believe. If you have conviction, full of joyful trust that Jesus is the Messiah and accept him as the author of your salvation in the kingdom of God, giving your obedience, then, then you may. And he replied, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. See that example? He brought, what? Philip closed the deal. He closed the deal. He brought the man to the point of believing. And that is what we should do. That in our talking, in our sharing, we must bring our prospect to the place of belief. We must find out. If he doesn't believe, then we need to go back to the drawing board. Pray some more and then come back. Okay? So I think, let me, let me put it here before I, I, will, I will go to the questions. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Any questions? Any questions on how to share your faith in Christ? This is the opportunity. This is, this is practical. So, you know, the, 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 the more questions, the better. Whether it's a question of lack of boldness, anything, you know, we can ask and we, we, the, the Holy Spirit will, will provide answers. Okay. In the absence of Sister Sheila. Yes, Pastor. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spotlight. <laughs> oh, oh. So just give us, yeah, just give us a, just a snapshot of, of what <laughs> happened yesterday. You did well. You did. You you, you acted <laughs> promptly. So just tell us a, a bit about it. Please, please, let's listen to Stashila. Yeah, I have this friend in Germany, and he's an old schoolmate, and um, somebody recently gave him my number, so we started uh, to chat. But yesterday. I didn't even know what what brought about the the, the, the conversation or the message of um, salvation. Uh, I think we were talking about something, and then all of a sudden he said um, he, he he knows that there is creation, and as as far as there is creation, there is um, um, a creator. So he is only. Um, God that he believes in and he calls God um, Obadiah. He's only Obadiah that I believe in. I don't believe in anybody again. So I, I said, oh you believe in God. How about Jesus Christ? Don't you believe in Jesus Christ too? He said, who is Jesus Christ? They are all stories in the Bible. They just uh, preach to you from Sunday school. We've been believing these lies and all that. Uh, even the Jews do not believe in, in Jesus Christ. I said, yes, they will not believe because you yourself, let me ask you a question. Isn't it strangers that um, accept you more than people that you know? Because there's this thing, um, somebody you know back home, he knows where you're coming from, even if you are in England or you are 
wherever. He knows where you're coming from. Oh, forget about this, Sheila. It's, it wasn't she staying here? She was here with us. Um, we used to go to this place. We used to go to that place. Da, da. So it's the same with Jesus. Oh, they call him Joseph's son. Oh, that carpenter's son. <laughs> we know him. How, how we know him? So how can he be the son of God? The, the, and they thought Jesus was even blaspheming, calling himself, you know, son of God. And I also talked about the birth of Christ. I said, "Do you? Do you?" He said, "No, no, 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 no. I, I, that one is also a story. Which virgin and blah 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 blah." I said, "You know what? It's only the birth of Christ that is holy and unique, because it is not like." me and you where our parents came together and blah 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 he said he doesn't want to then I, I, I i'm sorry but i immediately said oh you lost you know <laughs> <laughs> that is re- that's I reflex said, i said yeah i said felix you lost so i i said okay have you read um john three sixteen? then he said yes what is there um, and I quoted him, I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So who is that son that he's talking about? He said, I'm telling you, he still stands on his ground that they are stories. There's no son anyway. It's only God. Then I said, but God and Jesus Christ is the same. So I, I can't get you. How can you say you 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 know there's creation? So um, there is a creator and you believe in God, but you don't believe in his son. So I also quoted him, um, John 3, um, 36, that if you accept and believes in the son as the savior, That's you right. have eternal life. But if you don't accept, reject him, then you lose your um, um, salvation. Mm. He said, no, no, no. Then I said, I also don't get you because if, if you believe in God, then Jesus Christ is, is God in That's flesh. Right. Yeah. He came down to die for us. And on the third day, he rose up again. He's now seated at the right-hand side of the Father Almighty. That's and he right. shall come back to judge the living and the dead. So if you believe in God, you don't believe in Jesus Christ. I don't get you. <laughs> so I also asked him, when um, God said, let us make man in our image, who was he referring to? He said, where is it? But I didn't go on because Pastor, he was he was totally lost, you know. I don't know. I said Holy Spirit should just deal with this guy because <laughs> um I don't know, maybe he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> then I said, Wow, Pastor Fred and these uh, men of God that are doing this evangelism thing, my God, it's tedious, you know. Because <laughs> You, you you say this and oh yeah pastor <laughs> good us to you because <laughs> I, I this guy was totally lost so i asked him are you in some occultic something or he said i don't i'm not in any occult or anything but i i just believe in god there's no son there's no i say you lost because jesus is god himself then he started also um speaking in tongues like he was just um how do you I call it? it? <laughs> Making fun of it was still uh, Making chaba, fun. Chaba, 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 chaba. I said, hey, <laughs> yeah, is it is it is it tongues that you yeah he is it tongues you speak it? He said, he said, Oh, forget about it, which tongues? Then I said, Oh, okay. So and you want you 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 asking me to marry you. I speak in tongues. So you I'll be staying with you and I'll be speaking my tongues and you'll be you'll be laughing. <laughs> You'll be laughing at me. You are mad, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> hey, immediately, I said, to God. Cannot, uh, immediately, I said, immediately, yeah, immediately, I said that marriage cannot, you know, take place. He he, he switched uh, to another. No, you can go to your church. You can do in everything. You can, you can, you know what? I will not be in your way. I I I just believe in God. I don't believe. I will not fight you. I will not do that. That's okay. I said, you know what? Can two walk together unless they agree? My spirit, what I believe in, and yours is totally different. So let's cancel this um, marriage um, um, issue. Yeah, it, it will not happen. <laughs> so um, yeah, well done. Well done. that was what happened well yesterday. But I was glad that I was able to at least say something like what yes. you've taught me came back, you know, and 
Yeah. Well done, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Pasta. We welcome. You've, you've dropped something. You've given something to think about. Look, in front of you, you might be doing all this. Yeah. When you have focus and light on his bed, remember the words that I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. You are, we are. And life. Children. Yeah. When he goes to bed, the Holy Spirit in the Bible verses you quoted, they will begin to work on mm -hmm. your mind. They will begin to mm -hmm. work. Uh -huh. Then you come across another Christian. See, see, Paul plant, uh, Paul plant, Paul planted. Apollos was said, God. Uh -huh. God. So you are planted. You will keep on planting. Another uh -huh. time you will try to engage you. Another time, another time you keep on planting. Eventually, somebody else will continue from there. So you have started the work. The fact that you remembered and you guys started start, start talking is a sign that you know salvation has come to its house. Yeah. But you see, the, you see the unbelieving man. You see the unbelieving man. His mind is on marriage. It's serious, so. <laughs> you see the unbelieving man. That is why yeah. you have to be very, very careful as a female. For we, the male, it is rare. It is rare. But mm -hmm. we are on guard as well. But it is rare that an unbelieving lady would try to be in your mm -hmm. house of death. Women, women are not like that naturally outside Christ. You know. Mm -hmm. But for the men, they know that a good woman is a believer in Christ. They know that. They know mm. that a very good wife because of the faith and the humility and the patience. And they know that. So some of them, that is their strategy. They will pretend uh -huh. that they are listening. They will pretend that they are coming. You see, you see, you see that you got him right when you said that you know, to come to work except they are Yeah. Yeah. Then you see that he changes. Yeah. That, oh, you can believe what yeah. you believe. You can. So what does it mean that if you if you marry and you stay in that house, he won't go to church. Uh -huh. You can go to church. That is wahala. Uh -huh. I <laughs> he'll pull me in the pit that he's in. <laughs> Even at a point you yeah. forbid you to go to church. Yes, that, yes, that yes. The home. Uh, you could get uh -huh. out, you are in trouble. And that's when the fight uh -huh. starts. So I always say that uh -huh. when it comes, the Bible says in the book of uh, second Corinthians chapter six, when you go to the latter part, it says that what relationship has life got with that? What uh -huh. relationship has Christ with Belea? What relationship has righteousness with unrighteousness? He calls the unbeliever darkness. He calls the believer uh -huh. light. He calls the unbeliever uh -huh. Belial, which is another name for Satan. And calls the uh -huh. he calls the unbeliever unrighteousness. Calls the believer righteousness. Uh -huh. So the unbeliever is a no go area. Uh -huh. Don't I mean that mistake? Is, don't even think it. And yeah, don't even try it. <laughs> percent sure that he has believed on Christ, and even that uh -huh. you better observe very closely. Mm -hmm. But we, the men, the men who are not born again, when they are not born again, they are very sneaky. Yeah, but Pastor, even born again, born born again, um, Christian men are sometimes they go um, off and they beat their wives. So how much more uh, an unbeliever? Believer. You you you, yes. I. Yes, except and that's why I always yeah. say that the only thing is the fact that that's why what me, that's why me I'm gangu. The main thing is that you have to stay in the word and prayer. Otherwise, the flesh mm -hmm. and it goes to everybody. Mm -hmm. Even if it's we so many we make the same mistake. They see a sister in church who was in a choir, you know, and you say, Oh, or maybe it was in some department mm -hmm. in the church. She looks like, oh, this is a wonderful sister. But maybe the sister herself in her day-to-day -day work, she's not strong in matured in Christ. And then when people enter into the how uh, marriage, you start seeing sparks flying, you know. So the answer, mm -hmm. the answer, the Bible has made it clear, and I'll, I'll take this opportunity. The Bible has made it clear. A believer should never marry an unbeliever. The Bible is clear on that. There are no yes. ifs, there are no buts. It's an absolute. Uh -huh. If you go at that way, uh -huh. you have taken wahala to yourself. Uh -huh. That one is uh -huh. a no girl. So you uh -huh. did well there that you quoted that Amos 3.3. Uh -huh. So that was his intent. Uh -huh. That was his intent. So uh -huh. he was thinking that you were that type that, you know, he can uh -huh. worm his way around you and some, yeah. some things too or something. Are not strong in the word, they would have said, Okay, no problem. This guy likes me. I've known him from school days. You yeah, know, they'll fall for it. Background. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, once we have we've got a common background. Okay, maybe when he marries, you change. Hey. <laughs> so well done. Well done. Well done. That's a good move. That's you. a good move. That's it. Mm -hmm. Continue. Right. Any other contribution or anybody quickly before we close who has experience maybe going out in evangelism or soul winning and Maybe that's success or some opposition. 
quickly before we go. <laughs> Any other? Okay, I think we'll put it here. That was very good. That was very good. I, I enjoyed that thoroughly. I really, really enjoyed that. That very, very thoroughly. So, Sister Sheila, um, that means that there's homework to do. Please, I know yeah. that you were flabbergasted, but don't leave him. <laughs> you are, you are yes. at the moment you are his only hope for salvation. <laughs> this 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 morning he he called me to, oh, to find out um, how I'm doing, and then he uh -huh. said, "Hey." You're not feeling way yet. You 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 were talking about um, Jesus Christ yesterday. Look at look at yes. I say yes. When when I talk of Je when I talk about Jesus Christ, I get well. That's right. <laughs> and I said I'm not. I said I'm not done with you. You know, wait, wait for me because now I cannot <laughs> wait Good for one. me when I get well. Yeah, we we'll get back on it. <laughs> so now you know you know that that the second Corinthians four four for the God of this mm -hmm. world has blinded mm -hmm. the mind of the unbeliever. From seeing the light mm -hmm. in the gospel. So now your prayer point is that remove the satanic blindness from his eyes. Yeah, I, I, I've pray. also forgotten something, Pastor. I told him about the Adamic sin nature. Uh -huh, uh -huh, I told uh -huh. him that the only sin is not sins, but sin mm -hmm. that yes. will send a man to hell yes. or to eternal damnation. It's yes. for someone not to believe that Jesus Christ is mm -hmm. the Son of God. Yes. And he yes. came. Yes. On, onto this mm. earth to die for us. And on mm. the third day, he rose up mm. again and he's That's seated right. at the right hand side of God. He's going to come back again and all that. He said, Excellent. Oh, I said, I don't believe in Jesus. I said, Okay, fine. But Jesus is God himself. Yeah. They are, right. th is the same person in the flesh. Right. So that is mm. Jesus. So it's the Adamic sin. I said, I am afraid for you because where you are heading towards mm. is it's dangerous. Mm, um mm, you point. don't believe you just believe that there's creation and there are mountains valleys and and <laughs> other things the air that you are breathing so there is god so that's all you believe in you don't believe in his son mm. it's through the son that you you have eternal life so if that's you right. don't believe in the son then uh, I don't know where you are. So, it, it was frightening yesterday. Yesterday, listening to him, it was really frightening. <laughs> but then I think I, I told God um, some of us are not um, verbal, like mm. you know, we're not um, like oh, Pastor cool. you and others no, here. No, no, no. So we're just praying that God should just send laborers into the vineyard and mm. to mm. just open people's eye because. Uh, I don't know. It's... Oh, but you've done well. You've done. It's a good start, Sister Sashila. You have done. Mm. You've done well. Don't, that, don't worry about that at all. See, the, what I've noticed about evangelism: the more you do, the more you get skillful. That's why I said you become fishers of men. It's a skill. It grows. See, you, mm. you face your fears. You get bold. You get, so it's okay. You start. It's good. It's good. It's good. But right mm. now, you are his only hope for the moment for salvation. So don't give up on him. Yeah. Pray, just pray and take away the spiritual blindness and just. Speak in terms mm -hmm. of what I said and keep on doing, keep on chipping. Like they say in our language, where you stand is where you stand. Stay there, keep on standing mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. As you keep on, you should mm -hmm. become clearer to him, clearer to him. Remember me, mm -hmm. it took five years before I got I got convinced. Mm -hmm. It took five years. Mm -hmm. it took five years. So mm -hmm. for some people, it might take his, he, he has never heard that before. So it is it has blown his mind. That's why he's resisting. Mm -hmm. See, he has never heard that before. It has blown his mind. God, he doesn't know that Jesus is God. What? Jesus is God. What are you talking about? Exactly. That's why mm -hmm. the resistance is. So keep on doing. You keep on going. Once again, you'll be talking with him and then you chip it in. You chip it in. You chip it. In. Eventually, you come to me and say, okay, you know what? Tell me some more about this. Thing. I want to hear it clearer. There you go. There you go. Then you mm -hmm. open up the whole vault. That's it. So it's okay. It's okay. okay. Yeah? So keep it up. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right, let me bring it to a close then. Oh, that was good. So tomorrow we're going to continue to more practical steps. May God bless the Tashila. Oh, yes. Because there's, there's uh, a friend who has also been messaging me. And today, in fact, I was thinking of blocking him. <laughs> With what you said, I think it's an opportunity rather to evangelize to him. Because yes. today he comes with a God scripture, and then tomorrow he comes with a, a red lip with a kiss, and I'm like, what are you about? <laughs> <laughs> so I was planning today to block him all together, but I think it's an opportunity to check his background in Christ. Yes, so yes. Right. Excellent. don't block him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stashila, that's it. 
That's it. That's it. That's it. No, so the, the, the thing is that it's very simple. If you detect that the unbeliever or whoever is going or another way, you know, then you can see the motive. So now you have to position yourself strategically. So you see that his mind is not on the gospel. So you have to be careful that you don't let his mind be that is because of you that he's not trying to get to the gospel. You have to make sure that you separate that, that it is for the sake of the gospel. Make sure there is no hypocrisy in that. See, you have to make sure that there's- Can no I add a little contribution to everything yes. everyone said? Yeah, just so the flow. Sorry, I'm outside, so it might be a bit loud. Um, as we're speaking, even me, I feel like the Holy Spirit is ministering on to me as well, and the way I approach evangelism. I think we need to definitely be patient because we need to remember as well the yes. enemy doesn't want them to be saved. So the more we yes. to them, the more opposition comes, the more they become defensive, the more yes. they kind of push us away. And it's very yes. easy for the, the human nature to think, why am I even bothering? Like, this person is so hard to get through. Yes. Um, so as we were speaking, God just said to me, be patient. It's not them. Their eyes are blinded. Yes. So you need to yes. with such, such patience and care and tenderness. So I just thought I'll add that to it as well. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So all we are saying is this, that just that our job is just to present the gospel. But if the unbeliever, like the man or the woman, is bringing other things that are outside the gospel, that is why you have to separate it. You know, and make sure that, yes, you know, you have to still make it sure and firm. You know, don't like such, uh, Jennifer is saying that we need to be patient. But in the patience, be careful that they don't draw you to the other line. That's where, that's where, that's where you've got to be careful. You know, for example, don't say that, no, when we, don't worry. I will accept when we get married, I will change. No. <laughs> no. The gospel is the gospel. It's, it's, it's a no-no. <laughs> it's a no-no. It's a no-no. It's a no-no. Yeah. That one is a total no-no. So, yes. But remember... Like uh, they are blinded, they are blinded. So you might be the person's only hope of salvation. So you play your role correctly before God. You know, if it's still the person you realize that, that there's a level where you can get to and realize that, no, the person is adamant. It's not about the gospel, it's just about me or the, this married thing the person is talking about. That one, wisdom will say that you have to do what? Detach. So now you have to use plan B, the ballistic missile of prayer. See that, pray for laborers to be sent to that person now. You have done your part. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. The person still is not. Anytime you talk, then they bring something. Or you talk, you bring something else. Then they have, then you have to realize that, okay, fine. For the moment, I've, I've, I've spoken to you about 20 times, 30 times. I can see another. So now I have to use prayer and pray that blindness is removed and labor somebody else will come and preach the gospel to you. See that? Yeah. So we are learning. I'm also learning. I'm also learning. Amen. Amen. That was fantastic. I've enjoyed it. More of that. This practical evangelism. This is what I like. It's so good and it's so lovely. Amen. So winning the loss at all cost with urgency. Amen. All right. Thank you very much, Tashila, once again. Thank you, Sister Rosemary. Thank you, Brother David. Thank you, Auntie Mary. Thank you, Sister Hetty. Thank you very much, Sister Vivian, Sister Nina Bell, Sister uh, Jennifer, Sister Ruth, and also, also uh, Liabetta and Angela. And there was brother, uh, was brother David here. Yeah, I thought I saw, hey, there he's there. He's there, right? So have a lovely day, 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 day. But like I said, on Tuesdays, we don't have any prayer meeting because it's the FGCI London branch worldwide pastors a mandatory prayer meeting. So yeah, keep on keeping up in the spirit and we'll meet tomorrow and continue this amazing topic in Jesus' name. Bye for now. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.